Before I begin, I had a short, very short, brief consultation with the Honorable Minister of Health, and he has reliably informed me that melatonin is back in stock. And it a relaxes her. So I think it will be a cure for all ludicrous dreams. Unfortunately, you might not be in a lot of people's dreams anymore. She did describe me quite well. Mr. Speaker, I firstly, firstly, I would like to commend and thank our honorable senior minister within the office of the president with responsibility for finance, Dr. Ashni Singh and his dedicated team for presenting such a remarkable budget. I would also like to thank my staff of the Ministry of Public Service for their significant contributions to this budget. Mr. Speaker, even as I rise to give remarks, I genuinely believe that budget 2022 stands fully defended by its contents. But for the sake of protocol, I will utilize the next 30 minutes to expound on the impact this exceptional budget will have on the lives of all Guyanese, our one Guyana. Mr. Speaker, before I delve fully into my presentation, I wish to speak on something I heard this morning from the Honorable Member, Ms. Dawn Hastings. She made reference, that Honorable Member, made reference to my colleague, the Honorable Joe Hamilton's statement yesterday when he remarked on the behavior of the opposition members like Yard Fowles. However, Mr. Speaker, that honorable member failed to reprimand her own honorable member when he looked across this room and called our honorable members Jagabats and Trench Grapples. Mr. Speaker, for the record, I would like to state that the definition on record of what a Jagabat is is a sexually promiscuous woman. So if you don't know that, know it now. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the fact is that Guyana is on an upward trajectory, and from the looks of it, we are headed for continued prosperity without any positive contribution from the APNU AFC opposition whatsoever. They have done years of talking, but they have not walked the walk. Mr. Speaker, we the members of the People's Progressive Party civic government stand judged by the people of Guyana. And over the past two years, they have seen how we have managed to bring this country back from a period of despair and pure despondency. They have seen us maintain composure in the face of significant threats. Threats to our nation's democracy, and not so long ago, Mr. Speaker, threats to the sanctity of this very honorable house. And my colleagues on the other side know exactly what I'm referring to, AKA the grabbing of the mace. Mr. Speaker, I pause here to say that yesterday, this Honorable House heard the word democracy being used by the Honorable Members on that side of the House. But Mr. Speaker, that word must have left a very bitter taste in their mouths as they held this nation hostage for five traumatizing months, trampled upon our Constitution, and attempted with all their might to violate a most fundamental right enshrined therein. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the holding on to power was not a fight for the people of this country. It was a fight to hold on to corruption, another word that aptly describes their tenure in office. But let's talk facts, Mr. Speaker. Some of the dishonesty was exposed by my colleague, the Honorable Minister Waldron, in her speech yesterday. But from my own ministry, 
Let me tell this nation that the Honorable Member, Mr. Patterson, accused this government some time ago of corrupt or malpractices without producing a shred of evidence. When that Honorable Member himself, while being Minister, was also the Valuation Officer for the scholarship students. So when those students needed to value their properties to lodge as surety, they paid him and obtained the valuation when they were leaving the country. The Honorable Member, this morning, Mr. Ramjatan spoke about, without any evidence, that the PPPC's gov government is always involved in corrupt practices. But Mr. Speaker, the only type of transparency that the coalition practiced was transparent corruption. Upon my tenure and this government's commitment to transparency and accountability, scholarship students are sent to the government valuation officers who work as just that. But here again, we shouldn't be surprised because under the previous regime, even government ministers were receiving scholarships before the nation's children. Each of the government's ministers, 10,000 pounds each for scholarships, and at least two of those scholarships have not been completed, money wasted, before the nation's children can get anything from it. Fast forward to August 2020, things have changed and this government has continued to deliver on the promises our comrades made during the elections campaign. And this is happening across all sectors, from serving our elders with continuous increases in old pension. And let me make it very clear, the coalition in all of its five years, the highest the highest increase in pensioners was $3,000. At one point, there was $500 increase. What a shame. From sir, to looking out for our children with a reintroduction and subsequent increase in the education cash grant. You took away from children, you stood up, you took away from children, but gave yourself. Not to mention, substantial investments in other critical areas such as housing and water, public works, health, and so much more. And Mr. Speaker, I have sat and I've listened here to people attacking the housing sector. The housing sector has a process whereby when they are allocating house lots, they have what is akin to a lottery. So they have house lots in a box and they're first they shake it and persons are pulling from it. What could be more transparent than that? Person. And have you looked at the, at, the, at the social media? There is no discrimination, none whatsoever. The only discrimination was under the five years of the opposition's rule in this sphere. It is also important, Mr. Speaker, to mention the billions of dollars that the government has spent on the many direct cash transfers that almost every Guyanese, yes, public servants included, every Guyanese has benefited from over the past two years. The COVID cash grants were extended to each and every household across this country. The education cash grants were given to every school aid child in the public and private school system. Absolutely no discrimination. Absolutely no child who was registered in either the public or the private school system was left behind. And that was direct money directly into the pockets of public servants as well. Every pensioner benefited from increased pensions and other subsidies to make their lives easier. Every frontline worker from force, forces armed with guns to those armed with scrubs benefited from bonuses. Every household affected by the devastating May 2021 flood, floods benefited from financial assistance to rebuild and recover. And Mr. Speaker, 
These were all given even before the government was able to tap into oil revenues. I won't go any farther, Mr. Speaker, because we all know that my colleagues on this side of the House are more than capable of highlighting the milestones and defending the budgetary requests for their respective sectors. So per permit me to utilize this to enlighten the nation. Honorable Mr. Mahi Paul and Honorable Sherrod Duncan, this is where you will want to listen now. To enlighten the nation about some of the important things that the P Ministry of Public Service intends to do with our proposed allocation of $3,312,000,000. Thank you, Minister of Finance. This represents a 7.45% increase or approximately $246.6 million more than we received as part of 2021 budget. And rightly so, Mr. Speaker, because this year we have much, much more to do. After years of operating without vision, that's the five years 2015 to half of 2020, and any proper direction whatsoever, the work of the Public Service Ministry is now being streamlined and executed in a manner that is strategic and forward-thinking. Permit me, Mr. Speaker, to refer to the APNU AFC's manifesto of 2015 on public service. Provide a meaningful subvention to all legally constituted and functioning trade unions. Embark on steps to reform and modernize the public service. Launch an intensive investigation into the entire human resource. Management functions within the public service. Establish an independent constitutional salaries review commission to be responsible for the periodic review of salaries, pensions, and other conditions. Mr. Speaker, of all that I have just listed, zero was done in the five years that the coalition held the Ministry of Public Service. Public Service. Mr. Speaker, you wouldn't see us on this side of the house launching a whole school that would only serve friends and cronies. That is not who we are, but it is exactly what prevailed with the Bartram College, Bartram Collins College. Mr. Speaker, when the college was first launched, it may have been an intention to be a noble venture, I don't know. But it wasn't until I assumed my current portfolio that I re realized the disservice that that college was doing. Now we like to talk about friends and families and cronies. The Bertram Collins College was exactly that for the APNU AFC. Everyone over the age of 60 ran that college. Everyone making more than 500,000 Guyana dollars to produce a clerk three from that college who would jump a clerk two in any ministry and the clerk two has to turn back and train that clerk three who was making more money than them. Talk about unfair recruitment practices, that was where it was at. And in our manifesto, we committed to fair recruitment practices. So the first thing to do was to shut down the unfair recruitment practices. It was yet another engine for discrimination set up by the APNU AFC. But that is not who we are in the PPP. Our agenda is about realizing the one Guyana that His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali has envisioned. A Guyana where all equal and every person has access to the same opportunities for growth and development. At the level of the Ministry of Public Service, our programs must, must reach Guyanese from all walks of life of every ethnicity, of every religion, of every gender, age, social class, 
and importantly, of every political and geographical corner of our country. And that is the direction that we will not deviate from, not at the level of the ministry and certainly not at the level of the PBPC government. Our programs for 2022 are fully aligned with the comprehensive 2030 development agenda. As many of you know, the primary role of the Ministry of Public Service is to develop the human capacity of our country. As such, the onus has been placed on myself and team to ensure that our nation is served by competent, committed, and ethical public officers. Not only that, we want to ensure that our training and capacity building initiatives are able to satisfy the needs of our country, not only now, but as we evolve as the global powerhouse that we are projected to become. We are not going to have our people wastefully enroll in programs that will serve them no purpose in the next 10 to 15 years. As a country, we must be able to foresee the skills that will be needed in the years to come and begin nurturing those skills from now. How do we do, do that? Well, Mr. Speaker, it requires vision, proper planning, and effective leadership, all of which the PBPC is. Qualities that were clearly absent from the government benches in the five years prior to August 2020. But all is not lost, Mr. Speaker, because this year, with, the with this allocation, I am sure that this Honorable House will approve. We intend to execute a national human capacity needs assessment in collaboration with the ministry, ministries of education and labor and UNESCO and members of the private sector. We want to ensure that years from now, Guyanese have the potential to take advantage of every opportunity available in the local labor market. Already, we know that our country is preparing for massive infrastructural transformation. So we envision an increased needs for, need for engineers, especially those who specialize in the construction of roads and bridges. To this end, we have tailored our scholarship offers to ensure adequate opportunity for opportunities for persons desirous of being in that field. We also know that our government has embarked on a mission to implement an iconic energy mix using wind, solar, hydro, and natural gas to be able to achieve 75% renewable energy by 2030. There, therefore, our scholarship offers will also pave the way for Guyanese to become qualified in the in area of renewable energy. The Ministry of Public Service is also collaborating with the Ministry of Health to offer the much needed and relevant scholarships for specialty areas in that sector. Example, pathology. Mr. Speaker, Guyana only has currently one pathologist. Human resource management and facilities management will also be areas of focus. Now, I have heard also from, uh, I believe, the previous member about training in oil and gas. The Ministry of Public Service commends that. And we have offered a number of skill sets, not just the masters in oil and gas, as broad as it is. It has many different skill sets, skill sets within. And we have granted a number of skill sets, skill sets from the Robert Gordon University in 2021, catering for our development in oil and gas. We also granted a number of scholarships in skill sets in oil and gas, of course, but in an entering stage from the NREC Institute in Suriname. And this year, Mr. Speaker, I proudly stand here to say that the Minister of Finance stated earlier, and I will restate it, that Guyana intends to establish an oil and gas institute to facilitate the needs of that sector. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Public Service also has a training division that you will be hearing much more about in the coming weeks. Because we intend to breathe some life into that critical department and ensure that the programs offered are impactful and worthy of the time people spend taking them to ensure a results-oriented public service. 
Training is in ethics and other soft programs, as well as robust training, will be launched. Evaluation of employees' performance will also be a very important part of the service. Previously, that division catered to the training and retraining of public servants. But Mr. Speaker, public servants are not the only ones serving Guyana. Our brothers and sisters in the private sector are just as valuable. And we believe too that they should have access to our training. So in 2022, with the handsome budget that I have been allocated, the Ministry of Public Services Training Department will also be extending outside of the public sector. <clears throat> Once our allocation of $20 million is approved for the training division, we will be purchasing a corporate training package which contains up to 200 programs stemming from human resource management to conflict resolution, etc. Added to that, plans to the tune of $15 million are being made to kickstart the establishment of a regional center for excellence in information technology in each of the 10 administrative regions in Guyana. In 2021, the CEIT, as it is known as, began training public servants in basic IT, a relevant training, a relevant training since digitization is a very integral part of a modern public service. Mr. Speaker, it is well known that modernization is the name of the game for this government and the public sector will follow suit. We will be partnering with stakeholders to upgrade the way services are offered. These include ensuring electronic access to government forms as well as implementing paperless office operations, etc. We will also be reviewing and updating the human resource policies of the public sector. We have already begun with our job description assessment throughout the public service in 2021 that will continue on in 2022. Government of Guyana scholarships. Mr. Speaker, we have come to this house to ask for the approval of a 1.535 billion allocation to continue the very important Government of Guyana scholarship. Before the launch of the 20,000 online scholarships initiative, this was one of the key functions of the Ministry of Public Service. And I pause here because the previous speaker, the Honorable Member, Ms. Halley, made a reference that the Ministry of Education hijacked the gold program. But it can only be when you are looking at something in a shallow way that you will think that. But the PPPC government has always worked as a team and we will continue to do that in our term in office and onwards. <laughs> Over the years, these scholarships have ensured the further qualification of some of our best and brightest minds. It has also helped us to retain those persons in the service of Guyana. In the years to come, Mr. Speaker, we are hoping to even increase the number of scholarships offered to Guyanese under this heading. But in the meantime, let me let you know that last year, 1,394 persons were pursuing tertiary studies through the Government of Guyana scholarships and this represents a worthy investment of $1.6 billion that was allocated to the Ministry of Public Service to do just that. Oh, of that 1,394 that I mentioned, 833 of the scholarships were students continuing programs, while 581 persons were new beneficiaries awarded just last year. Of the scholarships we awarded last year, 481 were students studying locally, while 100 were persons studying overseas. Last year, our new awardees were drawn from each of the 10 administrative regions of Guyana. And that is also how we do things, Mr. Speaker. I want to bring attention to how this government implements transparency in everything that it does. In the Ministry of Public Service, the largest grant is the University of Guyana scholarships. And it goes through, it goes through a scholarship select committee of several members comprising of somewhere about 14 persons who would assess these persons. But Mr. Speaker, I want to also draw your attention that in the five years that the coalition sat in office, the largest grant was never subjected to a scholarship committee. It was upon the ministers 
it was upon the minister's discretion. Mr. Speaker, from Region 1, there were six persons granted University of Guyana. Region 2, 28 persons. Region 3, 116. Region 4, 284. Region 5, 33. Region 6, 51. Region 7, 7. Region 8, 1. Region 9, 10. And Region 10, 4 to 5. In 2019, zero was given to Region 8 and 9. As it relates to goal, as it relates to goal, Mr. Speaker, you would recall that we promised 20,000 online scholarships within a five-year period. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we came in at half of 2020, so we started that scholarship, and we know why we came in at, in half of 2020. We were trying to fight off the rigors, and um, and so this initiative began in 2021. <clears throat> 6,000 online scholarships were granted in 2021, sir. The, minute, the government promised 4,500 scholarships, but 6,000 were granted. Mr. Speaker, goal, I believe, has been one of the best programs ever implemented by any government in this part of the world, and perhaps even beyond. I don't see how any sane person would be against something that represents positive positivity to this magnitude. But it shouldn't surprise any of us that the APNU AFC has objections to even this. Because from what we've seen in the news, the honorable members seem to be objecting even among themselves and to themselves. So I'm not too bothered by the utterances here today. As a matter of fact, I can't even tell my predecessor, my speaker before me, in which part of the coalition she sits. What I am concerned with, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that we have returned to this honorable house seeking approvals for an additional 1.3 billion to roll out the additional 4,500 gold scholarships that have been earmarked for this year and to continue those we have already started. Mr. Speaker, permit me to also address the elephant in the room, the topic of salary increases for public servants. Mr. Speaker, this government in 2020, in December, granted, although the treasury, the treasury was empty when we got in here, deficit, the government still managed to give public servants $25,000 one-off cash grant in December. Mr. Speaker, a 7% increase was given in 2021 despite we faced cost of living, no fault of the government, and also in the middle of a pandemic that doesn't seem to want to exit the world. Mr. Speaker, Compare that to what the APNU AFC has done for public servants. And you know, my honorable colleague and friend, the honorable member, Mr. Zulfikar Mustafa said, and he's so right, that the honorable members on the other side think that they own a part of this, a pop, part of this population. And I will say that these honorable members think that they have transport at, over the public servants who they think that they own as property. You do not own them as property and you cannot use them as pawns in this honorable house. No. Mr. Speaker, salary increases were given, yes, by the AP and UAFC. But what did they do? They deliberately, as opposed to us, deliberately raised the cost of living by pushing on the backs of every Guyanese taxes on 200 items, basic taxes, deliberate move to raise cost of living. So they give with one hand and snatch with the other hand throughout the five years. So don't stand here and tell this government that they don't care about public servants. Every single year, there will be money allocated on the 6 to 1, 4 to 1 for public servants. So don't mislead the nation by saying nothing is in here for public servants. In 2018, in the Hansard, which is a public document, 
When questioned, the then finance minister, Mr. Jordan, said it would be presumptuous of him to say that X amount or Y amount can be placed in a budget. He has to consult with the union, etc., and then a percentage will be given. But the APNU AFC very well knows that a figure is not, and a percentage is not given for salary increases in a budget. There is a, well, would you like me to answer you last week? And they were very happy. Honorable well, Minister, before you answer her, you will need an extension. Mr. Speaker, I would like to ask for an extension for the Honorable Member of Five Minutes to conclude her presentation. Thank you, Honorable Minister of the Public Service. You may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the very issue of salary increases, tell the public servants how you cared about them so much that when you got into office, even before looking at them, you raised your own salaries by 50% increase. Tell them that you raised yours before you raised theirs. But as the Honorable Prime Minister of Barbados says, the truth hurts. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the issue of goal, which is still one of the government's best initiatives, and all of the initiatives that this government has rolled out, have been great and excellent initiatives. Mr. Speaker, I would like now to give you the statistics on goal. Region one, and Mr. Speaker, when we speak of one Guyana, this is what we speak about. This is what we speak about. And Mr. Speaker, this list was published in the newspapers. It was published on social media for all to see. Region one, number of persons qualified, 240. Number of scholarships given, 238. Region two, 536 qualified applicants, 531 granted. Region three, 1,008 applications applicants qualified 875 granted region 4 3619 qualified applicants 2767 granted region 5 463 qualified applicants 378 granted region 6 525 Qualified applicants, 510 granted. Region 7, 242. Qualified applicants, 240 granted. Region 8, 100 uh, qualified applicants, 97 granted. Region 9, 236. Qualified applicants, 230 granted. Region 10, 312 qualified applicants, 282 granted. And out of the not stated regions, 337 qualified applicants, 182 granted. And Mr. Speaker, as we stand here, I'll show you what one Guyana look like, looks like. In this honorable house, we have from region three a goal awarding. In region four, we have- Hon Honorable Minister, you'll need my permission to ask them to stand. Mr. Uh, Speaker. I, I will ask the Google Scholarship uh, recipients to stand and we can acknowledge them and then you can continue. Thank you. Everyone can stand. I'm saving time. Thank you. Region 5 and Region On Honorable Minister, you, you can you continue. Thank you, sir. Unfortunately, the hinterland was too far for us to bring the students. But on our website, they did give their quotes as to what goal means to them and what it means to their family. Mr. Speaker, this government is committed to transparency, accountability, one Guyana, unity, and this government will continue until 
many, many more years to come to be exactly that way. And Mr. Speaker, this government is committed to ensuring that the welfare and the lives of all Guyanese are taken care of. Through this gold scholarship, the burden of finding, of finding finances by parents for their children's tertiary education has been adequate. That question and that problem has been solved by this government. And we will continue to do that. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, one last thing. Again, we are committed to ensuring that all Guyanese are empowered. To this end, and I know my colleague and honorable, minister, my, my honorable friend, Minister Vindia, will speak on what her ministry has done. But with the Gold Scholarship, we are ensuring that women are empowered. And to do this, Mr. Speaker, the total number of males that were granted, 1,882. And the total number of females, 4,118. Mr. Speaker, I thank you and I thank the honorable members. I know that at some point that they will give in and they will give in to logic and they will agree that this budget, 552 billion and 900 million, has, is going to make such a great impact on Guyana. Thank you.